Hi, today we're going to learn about diffusion osmosis and active transport. Okay, this chapter, we're going to define what diffusion osmosis and active transport is about. We're going to see and know the importance of water potential in living cells. Okay, two types of transport, basically passive and active. Passive transport means basically you do not need energy for the substance to move and substances generally move from a higher concentration to a region of lower concentration without the need for energy from the cell. Active transport, on the other hand, is the movement of substances from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration against a concentration gradient. Energy is required for this process and normally energy comes from the cell respiration. Okay, molecules as we know are in constant motion and the motion is random and energy required comes from the molecules themselves, the kinetic energy. Okay, diffusion definition is the net movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration down a concentration gradient. So what is a concentration gradient? Basically any two regions that are of two different concentrations you have a concentration gradient and molecules diffuse down a concentration gradient as you can see left hand side high concentration on the right molecules will tend to move from a high concentration gradient sorry high concentration to a low concentration down a concentration gradient same like this when you place a lump of sugar in water, you will dissolve after some time, the entire beaker of water becomes a sugar solution. So diffusion is a form of passive transport and diffusion will stop when the concentration gradient is zero. That is, the concentration of molecules at any point in the solution becomes the same. So what examples of diffusion do you know? Well, as we all know, all living organisms depend on the environment for food and raw materials. So nutrients and oxygen move into the cells by diffusion. Unwanted metabolic waste are removed from the cell by diffusion. Taking oxygen and removing carbon dioxide from the cell is also by diffusion. Large quantities of digested food products are absorbed into the bloodstream also by diffusion. Waste products coming out of the tissues into the bloodstreams and into the excretory organs to be removed from the body is also done via diffusion. Photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide and to remove oxygen from the leaves all by diffusion. Now let's take a look at osmosis. Slightly different from diffusion, osmosis is the net movement of water molecules from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential through a partially permeable membrane. As you can see, similar to diffusion, water molecules move down a water potential gradient by osmosis, a higher water potential to a region of lower water potential through a partially permeable membrane. Okay, osmosis is also a form of passive transport and it also stops when water potential greater than zero. That is, the water potential or the amount of water molecules on both sides of the partially permeable membrane becomes the same. So what examples of osmosis do we know? Well, a dilute solution has a higher water potential than a concentrated solution. And distilled water definitely has the highest possible water potential. So in this diagram, if you see there is a membrane in the middle, in the, in the middle of the two solutions of 1% sugar solution and distilled water. There's a high water potential in the distilled water, hence there's a net movement of water molecules from the right to the left. And as you can see, the water level will move accordingly. The right will rise sorry the right will drop on the right hand side the water level will drop and the left hand side the water level will rise 
Okay, which direction will the net movement of water take place? In a, in a normal membrane, if both sides of the solution have the same concentration, it would mean that both are isotonic solutions of the same water potential, and hence there is no net movement of water molecules. If it's different, the 1% glucose solution has a higher water potential than the 10% glucose solution as water molecules will move from the 1% glucose solution to the 10% glucose solution. Now in a normal cell, if I place this into a solution called an isotonic solution, an isotonic solution is a solution that has the same concentration as that of the cell. No net movement of water molecules take place. Rather, there is no osmosis. In a hypertonic solution, it means a concentrated solution, the cell will shrink. The hypertonic solution has a lower water potential than the water potential inside the cell. Water molecules will definitely leave the cell and the cell becomes plasmolyzed and flaccid. This is a picture of a plant cell that has been plasmolyzed in a hypotonic solution. In a hypotonic solution basically is the opposite. It means it has a higher water potential than the cell. Water molecules will diffuse, in this case will move into the cell causing it to be turgid. This is a picture of a hypotonic solution where plant cell is turgid pressure in hypotonic solutions, water enters the cell, the cell contents is pushed against the cellular cell wall. To prevent overexpansion of the cell, the cell membrane exerts an opposing pressure to prevent water from entering and the cell is becomes turgid. This swollen cell is said to be in the state of turga. An outward pressure which the cell exerts against the cell wall is called turga pressure. So why are the turgid cells useful to plants? Turgid cells give the plant support, keeping the stems of many plants upright to catch sunlight for photosynthesis. What happens to these cells when these cells lose water? Well, without water, they do not become firm and turgid. The plant will wilt. The plant will wilt and then die. Now let's move on to animal cells. These are red blood cells. What happens if these cells were placed in solutions of different concentrations? Are they the same as plants? In a low water potential solution, low water potential solution or hypertonic solution, water molecules inside the cell will move out into the solution. The cells shrivel and probably die. When placed in a hypotonic solution or a dilute solution, the water potential on the outside is higher than inside the cell. Water, water molecules will move into the cell, the cell will swell and eventually will burst. Okay, these three diagrams illustrate how the cells behave in different solutions. In A, you have isotonic solution same concentration as the cell. Nothing happens. In B, the red blood cells have been placed in a hypertonic solution or dilute solution. Sorry. Hypotonic solution or dilute solution. Water molecules moved in, the red blood cells swell, it may burst. In C, the red blood cells are placed in a concentrated solution or a hypertonic solution. And they shrivel up. Okay, as you can see. Cells can take up some particles and keep them in high concentrations. Look at the root cell, root hair cell. Inside the root hair cell, you have lots of magnesium ions as compared to the, the, those in the soil. 
how do you maintain this? As you know, in diffusion, you know the magnesium ions inside the root hair cell will diffuse out to the soil. How do I keep them from coming out? Well, they use active transport. So active transport is a process in which energy is required to move the particles of a substance against a concentration gradient from a region that is low concentration to a region that is high concentration. As you can see, moving up the concentration gradient. Okay, this occurs only in living cells because energy is required and it comes from cellular respiration from ATP, adenosine triphosphate. It's an energy rich compound which is used to release energy for all activities like active transport. Okay, some examples of active transport. For example, absorption of mineral salts from soil by the plants. The absorption of glucose and amino acids in small intestines. Okay, mineral salts are very dilute in the soil. They are more concentrated in the vacuoles of the root hair cells. Hence, they cannot diffuse across the membrane. So iron uptake by root hair cells is facilitated by active transport against the concentration gradient. Okay, as you can see. Absorption of glucose and amino acids occurs through the inner surface of the small intestine, the villi. They need to be absorbed quickly. Diffusion is not enough. We need active transport to absorb all the glucose and amino acids into the bloodstream. Okay, this is the villi, microvilli, direction of active transport. Finally, surface area to volume ratio. Well, cell A, cell B, cell C in this diagram shows you cell A with 1 cm cube, sorry, 1 cm cube volume of cytoplasm compared to a cell B which is bigger. Anyway, to cut it short, cells with a high surface area to volume ratio tend to have a higher absorption rate, either of oxygen or food of waste products than cells with have a bigger overall size like cell C. In cell C, the surface area to volume ratio is actually very small. Alright, I hope this has been useful. Uh, thank you for viewing this lesson.